Musicalmente, qué momento sería el que más te tocó la piel, la sensibilidad. It's it's when the singer, the one, well, the guy that looks like looks like Michael, when he's performing and when he hits the beat, the music just like he does, and it just it's touching. It's beautiful, but it's touching to you at the same time. And, and I think about how much he put into that to look that way and get that way. And, and he did a fabulous job. But yes, when, when he's when he appears on the stage, it makes me sad. It's, but it's a good it's a good sadness. It's, it's good because he's so much like him, and that's the reason. But otherwise, it's really good. It's really good to see that so close to that. My name is Alex Blanco, and I am 24 years old. I met Latoya Jackson. I met Jermaine Jackson. I met people like Juku Sumida, which is Michael Jackson's dancer. I met people like Dieter, which is pretty much Michael Jackson's personal manager. I am right now touring worldwide with a show called Forever King of Pop. We are right now touring worldwide. We've been through France, we've been through Spain, Portugal, Mexico. Now our next stop, as the time I'm recording this video, our next stop is Germany. But I'm not here to talk about what I am living now and who I am right now. Um, I'm here to explain to you all this process that I've been through, all this process that I've gone through for 10 years. It took me 10 years to be right now where I am and what I'm doing right now. It took me 10 years. So this video is going to be long, so sit down, relax, grab some popcorn, uh, maybe share it with some friends or tell some friends to watch this with you because I think this can serve as an inspiration for many people. I think it can serve as a motivation for many people to actually believe in themselves a bit more. And I hope my story helps you believe a bit more in your own dreams. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start with my story back in 2009. So pretty much, I was this guy who was addicted to video games. I would sleep in the same room with my brother. We would sleep together in the same room and we would be playing games all day, all night. We would even like, we were supposed to go to bed at night and we were playing video games. I was this geeky guy, this geeky kid at school who would only be talking about video games even though nobody would have cared. Nobody would have cared about video games. I was the only nerd who would have loved to talk about games with anybody. And I would play Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, The Sims. I would play games all the time, video games constantly. In fact, I opened up a YouTube channel, which is probably the same channel you're watching this video on. I opened this YouTube channel just to, up just to upload like some highlights. Me playing Doom, me playing Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, Guitar Hero. I opened this channel originally just for me to upload some highlights of me gaming playing video games, you know, and it's crazy how nobody would have supposed, nobody would have guessed that that kid back then, that kid who would make videos about video games or make, like, just spend his time playing video games alone would become a Michael Jackson impersonator 10 years later, like a professional impersonator. It's crazy. And so, how did it happen? How did it happen? Look, I was this type of kid who would go to class, I would come back from school, uh, I would do my homework, and as soon as I, my homework was done, I would go to the computer and play video games or watch videos on YouTube, because back then in 2009, 2008, 2009, like, YouTube was already pretty popular. It was very popular, in fact. So, honestly, I would spend my time playing games and watching YouTube. Um, and I would watch a lot of live performances of my favorite bands, like I would watch performances of Metallica, Guns N' Roses, I would even watch Nightwish performing live. I would love, I, I loved to see those bands perform live. I think like artists performing live, it's like the pure experience, how you really experience an artist's craft. So I would watch them perform live and I enjoyed them a lot. But here's the thing. I was one day in class, you know, Michael, 
Michael Jackson already passed away, 25th June. We're talking about October 2009. And we were in class and suddenly I see this guy in class doing the moonwalk. In, you know, in a break somewhere, like in, in a break between classes or something. Like I saw him doing the moonwalk. And I was like, wait a moment, isn't that this famous move by Michael Jackson? Like we all know this move called the moonwalk. And I was like, yeah, that's, this is this cool Michael Jackson move, you know, the moonwalk. I was like, wow, can you teach me? I mean, I, I think that's cool. I mean, I think that looks pretty cool. And he said, you know, I can teach you, but it's better for you to learn from the experts in YouTube. Just search on YouTube, you will find a lot of tutorials. I was like, oh really? Yeah, search on YouTube. So I went on YouTube and ladies and gentlemen, I learned how to do the moonwalk. It took me pretty much um, a couple of days to learn it, to master it. Well, not to master it, but to learn it, to kind of like be confident about it, to know like, oh, I can do the moonwalk. I feel good doing the moonwalk. It's, it's fun. And I would record myself. I was obsessed with recording myself all the time. I loved recording myself, whether it was playing the guitar or just, yeah, like rehearsing anything. And in this case, rehearsing Michael Jackson, like dancing and doing the moonwalk. But here's the funny thing, is that when I was learning how to do the moonwalk, I never actually saw Michael Jackson do it. I just saw like tutorials of people teaching how to do it, but I never got into the actual material. I never got into the actual watching the real thing, watching Michael Jackson do it. So it all happened one afternoon where I said, okay, I'm gonna watch the real deal. And I searched Michael Jackson live and I searched that on YouTube. And suddenly there was this video that I came across that was Michael Jackson, Billie Jean live in Madison Square Garden, 2001. This was basically right before the 11S, before the the Twin Towers incident. Um, and I saw Michael Jackson perform Billie Jean for the first time live. I never saw a live performance of Michael Jackson. I, I always felt interested in Michael Jackson, but I never saw him live. I saw some music videos, Thriller, Smith Crown, but I never saw him perform live in a video. And when I saw his live performance in Madison Square Garden, when I saw that video, I fell absolutely in love with everything, but the whole suitcase thing and grabbing the glove and putting on the jacket and all the thing, the magic around the performance, it just felt so incredible. And of course, the moonwalk he did, it just felt also very awesome. And when I saw that performance, the first thing that came to my mind was, I have to do this. I don't know why I felt the need of doing this. I was alone at home. I was used to living with my brother ever since I was born. So when my, la when my brother was you know, 18 years old and he left home, I felt very lonely and I had these very lonely afternoons. I it was very weird to suddenly not be with your brother. So I didn't know what to do with my free time. I didn't know what to do when I had no homework to do, when I had nothing to do about school. I didn't, I didn't know what to do, play video games, but I, I was pretty empty without my brother. So I found like some kind of escape with Michael Jackson. So that same afternoon, the same afternoon I saw that Billie Jean performance in Madison Square Garden, I said, wait a moment, I have to record myself doing this. So I pretty much searched for a glove at home, like a white glove. I didn't care if it didn't have any sequins, if it didn't have any rhinestones, it was just a white glove. I searched for a white glove, for a hat, and of course, for some loafers. The loafers I was wearing that day was pretty much the loafers of my dad. Those loafers were from my dad, and those loafers are like three sizes bigger than my feet. So they were pretty big on me, but I did Billie Jean for the first time ever. That was literally the first time ever I did Billie Jean. Now, this video, I uploaded it back then. I said, oh, I wanna upload, I wanna share this to my friends. I wanna show them how I learned how to do the moonwalk. I, I wanna show them that I, I'm proud of this. And, you know, I was proud of it, but my classmates, some friends, even my family, they were like, okay, uh, this is awkward, like, and it's funny, like, you do it bad, you are bad, 
And of course, I didn't see it that way. I was like so optimistic about it. I was like, but it's cool. I mean, look at my feet. Look how am I moving? I'm I'm moving so good. And people were like, no, you're you're not moving good. You that that is lame. <laughs> that was so bad. That was so bad. And this was October 2009. But here's the thing. That video became kind of viral at school like everybody in school were talking about that video everybody at school were talking about the Billie Jean I've done at home people would say like oh my god you look like drunk you look like a drunk kid I was like why how is that that why how and so many people were very skeptical many people were like no don't do that don't don't do this like stop it just study get your normal job in the future and, and stop pursuing this. Don't do this. I was like, wait, why? Why shouldn't I do this? Why, why should I listen to you? And honestly, the criticism I got motivated me to actually get better at that. So I got obsessed. And when I say that I got obsessed, I'm saying that I really, truly got obsessed. I would literally every day practice all afternoon, all day, right after coming back from school, I would be practicing and watching videos of Michael Jackson. I was mesmerized. I was watching more and more performances of Michael Jackson. I was falling in love with what I was seeing. Michael Jackson felt so unique to me that I was discovering all these live performances of him. And I was like, wow, how the heck? I never discovered this guy before. Like, yeah, I knew about him, but I never like truly got into his stuff. I mean, I was born in 1995. Michael Jackson made his last tour in 1996, 1997. So I never got the chance to really see him and to really experience the Jackson fever, right? And so I experienced the Jackson fever unfortunately after his death. And so I got obsessed with dancing and studying Michael Jackson, like every day. I would upload videos every day. I would upload videos on social media. There was this Spanish social media called 20, which I would upload the videos there all the time, constantly. People would be like, oh my God, you're so boring all the time with Michael Jackson. I didn't care. I was like literally doing it. And back then I was 14 years old. When I started, I was 14 years old. And here's the thing. I mean, I was 14 and at the age of 14, you're, you're starting your teenagerhood. You're starting to be a teenager. And you as a teenager, your hormones, your brain, everything is starting to shift. You start to feel curiosity for life. You start to feel curiosity for sex. You start to feel curiosity for love, for all those kind of things. I didn't feel any curiosity for anything. The only curiosity I had was Michael Jackson and learning how to dance with him. So it kind of sounds extreme, but I literally had no social life from then on. I didn't have social life at all. I left everything behind just to get better at dancing. It was an obsession, such a big obsession that I lost a lot of friends in Galicia, right? Uh, I lost a lot of friends because I was literally just obsessed, super obsessed. Uh, but then it happened. I fell ill. I had to be in hospital for one month and I've been diagnosed with the disease of Crohn. The Crohn's disease is pretty much an autoimmune system disease, which pretty much your body rejects your intestines. And if you eat very processed food and you know, like sodas and things like this, alcohol, your body rejects your own body and you start having these really crazy reactions, diarrhea and crazy things. So I've been in the hospital for one month. I got anemia. Uh, my weight was 48 kilos. I was really, really thin. Um, but I still kept dancing. I remember like being in the hospital for that whole month and they told me, don't dance, don't 
dance, Alex. We need you to rest. We need you to stay in good conditions for us to diagnose your whatever problem you have or whatever. I, I, I was like, yeah, okay, okay. But as soon as I was left alone in the room, I would just escape to the bathroom and I would rehearse and dance in the bathroom. I was like that. I was obsessed. I was crazy obsessed. So I ended up weighing like 48 kilos, which that was nothing. That was very little. And I would do my very first performance in front of an audience, like half a year, my first half a year dancing Michael Jackson. <laughs> For me, that moment was absolutely crazy. I was super proud. The audience was super crazy. They were wild. They like, they were like, "Oh my God, this this is the geeky kid we know from like years, like playing video games and all that." And now suddenly we are seeing this guy doing this Michael Jackson thing, and people were like very, very excited about it. And wow, the audience was wild and crazy. And you know, like, it all happened really fast. Like, I started to get better, I started to gain weight again because, you know, because of the Crohn disease, you know, I was, I was losing a lot of weight, but I was slowly gaining weight again, and I was slowly getting better, and, but I would still keep on dancing. And so I would keep doing my students' life, and I would keep dancing and improving. But then it's when it, pretty much everything started to get better. So I would start to get my first gigs, like this is like a gig uh, at Cambados. It was three people doing Billie Jean. Yes, three people doing Billie Jean. I was in the center doing it and it was pretty fun, even though the music bugged in one moment, right in the moonwalk part. <laughs> The music stopped playing. There was a mis there was an error there in the system. I don't know what happened exactly, so that kind of ruined our show a bit. <laughs> Things happen, you know. It's what it is. It's it's life stuff. It's what happens. But you know, at home I would keep dancing and rehearsing. I would meet some people online. Most of my friends back then were online friends. Honestly, uh, people in my town, they were kind of supportive, but not all of them. Many of them were really skeptical about me and they would tell me, no, don't keep doing this. Just don't, don't. I was like, no way, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep going. And I kept going. And so I met a lot of people online. I met this guy called Christian Jackson and we did uh, our performances together, even though they were very bad because we never rehearsed together. So both of us, we would do whatever we wanted to do. Like we were not coordinated at all. Like we were literally doing different versions of the same song in the same performance. That was so weird. And I would do these music videos on YouTube. Like I would first get my Smooth Criminal jacket. I remember asking my parents, God, I need that Smooth Criminal jacket. Please get that Smooth Criminal jacket. I want that Smooth Criminal jacket. Like my parents were like, oh my God, it's, it's expensive. It's online. Oh, that was like, please, please, please. And so they got the Smooth Criminal jacket for me. And when I got that jacket, I was like, I have to make a video. So I make this video. I made this very weird video, like me dancing at home and doing like this thing. Like I always loved, I always loved making videos and making cinematic type of music videos and all that. And I was like experimenting with the dancing and creating videos at the same time and mixing those two things that I loved together. And I made that. <laughs> The funny thing is that in Smooth Criminal, there is this trick of the anti-gravity lean. I didn't have the mechanism to do that trick, that magic, that magic trick. So what I did back then was pretty much After Effects. <laughs> oh my god, it's just so bad. It's just so bad. It's so bad, but at the same time, I was so proud back then. I was like, oh my god, I did this effect in After Effects. That's so crazy. I'm so proud of myself. Uh, but it was so bad. It was so fake. It's crazy. But I had a lot of fun doing that. So time went by. Time went by. I, 
I asked my dad to help me create the smooth criminal boots so I could do the lean live performing and so he said okay what's we're gonna do it so my dad made those boots for me and I put them on and I just started practicing the smooth criminal lean and people like my friends were like oh my god that has to be so cool to do that i was like yes it is so cool and it's really cool because that same year 2010 i would make my very first smooth criminal performance with the lean and people got people liked it <laughs> Time passed, time passed. I kept doing my things, I kept doing videos. I met my very first girlfriend and we would even make videos together. We would like go onto the street and make this the way you make me feel kind of music video even though it was cringy as hell. But I wanted to do it. I felt I had a lot of fun and it was really fun and it was crazy. A lot of criticism <laughs> that video received. I love criticism. I was still learning. I was still getting better. My makeup was not there. My looks were weird. I was looking weird in general and my dance moves were also weird. The video itself was weird. Um, but my very first big hit on YouTube was black or white. I would do this black or white video at home. I asked my mom, hey mom, help me record this video. And she said, okay, whatever, I'm gonna help you record this video. And she helped me. And this video surprisingly has around like hundreds of thousands of views. And it was just me improvising and doing some kind of homemade looking music video on YouTube doing back black or white. In fact, I can tell that I was one of the first, if not the first, Michael Jackson impersonator to do music video looking videos on YouTube doing Michael Jackson. And so that's why I became a bit popular uh, because of that. People know me because of that. People know me because I started doing a lot of these type of videos. I would do uh, a lot of videos, cinematic looking videos. People liked the videos. People liked the approach I had on these videos. People liked the fact that I made homemade looking music videos and they, they enjoyed it. And these videos became kind of popular even though I was, I had no idea what I was doing. And I could just kept doing videos and kept impro improving. I even started doing a bit of more makeup and getting a better wig so I could do better looking videos and all that. I, I was going on, I was going on until I went to some auditions. And these auditions were a big, moments in my life because I never went to an audition before. So these auditions were for a Michael Jackson show that would be produced in Spain. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go there. So I went to the auditions and I was chosen to be Michael Jackson, which is crazy. And that show was called It's All For Love and it would be the Resurrection Tour. Um, and we would recreate on a big scale a Michael Jackson concert, but in a big scale. We're not talking like a, a we're, we're not talking about a humble show. This was gonna be big. It was gonna be big. In fact, we were talking with the same people who made the This Is It stage for Michael Jackson himself. We were talking about with the same people. We were going to have the same pieces for some structures from the This Is It stage. It was crazy. <laughs> So, you know, it was this very crazy and super ambitious project. It was like very ambitious and we had months of rehearsal. I met these incredible people, really great dancers and at the same time, great people, like very nice people. Uh, I met this band, some band members were really, really nice too. It was such a good experience in general. It was my very first time 
really experiencing a professional level performing and professional level rehearsing and sharing knowledge with professionals and and just working with professionals it was my very first time really in that context and i was just 17 back then we're talking about 2012 2013 i was 17 years old and it just felt very intimidating but at the same time such a beautiful experience and such a different and new thing in my life and I was so excited because it was going to be very big uh, and we were about to sell our first show we were about to put on the tickets online we were about to sell the show and make it public but unfortunately after six or seven months of rehearsing constantly non-stop Unfortunately, the show got cancelled. Everything got cancelled because there were financial issues, financial problems, and due to those problems, since there was no, not enough money to finance and to make the show a reality, it got cancelled. And I was depressed. I was incredibly depressed. I was so excited to start, finally, a professional Michael Jackson impersonation journey. Like, I was so excited to finally be performing in front of so many people and make our own tour and our own production and and then it just went to the trash it didn't happen and i ended up with nothing <laughs> It was a beautiful project. It's So For Love was a project that I'm sure that if it ever existed, it would have done well. I'm not sure if it would have done very well, but it would have done well. And I'm sure that a lot of people would have enjoyed it, especially the Michael Jackson fans. They would have loved it. It was such a good approach to Michael Jackson's performances that it was a good balance. It was just not us copying a concert of Michael Jackson, it was us having the philosophy of Michael Jackson and putting it into our modern days and try to make Michael Jackson not only what we knew, but what it would have been if he was still alive, right? And so, unfortunately, that never happened and I was so sad. It was such an ambitious thing and I learned so much from these dancers. I learned so much from these musicians. It was such a beautiful project and such a beautiful company that unfortunately it just stopped happening because of money. Unfortunately, the world happens around money. So I, I was honestly about to throw the towel. I made a bunch of videos out there still. I kept going, I still kept grinding. My philosophy of life is grind. I will always grind and so I started grinding. I kept grinding. I made more videos on YouTube. A lot of these videos went very popular. They became popular. A lot of people would watch me online. They would watch me on YouTube. I made this panther video where I would like literally I would ask my mom, help me record this. My mom was my main camera guy for like a lot of years. And she would record me and I would be doing all these crazy things. I would break a 3D car, then I would, I would add that car in After Effects. And it's incredible how good it looks. Like it actually looks legit, almost legit. And I made that myself. I was learning video, I was learning dancing at the same time. I never stopped. I kept going year after year. Uh, I then turned 18. I moved to pretty much, I moved to Madrid. Uh, I finally said, okay, dad, mom, I love you guys, but I'm gonna try to find my path somewhere else. So I moved from Galicia to Madrid. I fly to Madrid and I started to live in Madrid and started to study, I started to study English studies at university and at the same time I always kept dancing. I never stopped. Uh, but it is true that then after one year studying English at the university, I decided to stop dancing, at least for a time. I felt like I was in this cycle of yes, doing YouTube videos, yes, a lot of people are watching me online. I started, I had 
hundreds of thousands and millions of views on so many videos. So many of my videos went incredibly viral. There is this Billie Jean video in 2013, late 2013. This Billie Jean video has today 8 million views. That is incredible. That's insane. There is this Smooth Criminal video with 2 million views. So I have like in this YouTube channel, in total, I have over 25 million views. It's absolutely crazy. It's it's mind blowing. But for me, that was not enough. I like I've, I've been for so long doing YouTube videos, for so long doing YouTube stuff, for so long doing online content that I felt frustrated. I was like, I have to get on a stage. I need to do this in real life, not only online. I like I was really happy with all the support I was getting but it was just not enough. I was repeating constantly, doing the same thing online and doing my tutorials and doing my videos, dancing like Michael, my music videos. I would even sometimes do some things that are not even Michael Jackson. I would do this Justin Timberlake dance, Strawberry Bubblegum, for example. I would do videos all the time, videos and videos and videos. I was obsessed with dancing, with videos, and with creating. And you know, here's the thing, I was so incredibly frustrated. I was like, it's fun and all, YouTube is fun and everything, but I need to actually just go to the next level and finally do this on stage and make a true living of this and, and really show live what I can do, what I, all I've learned all these years. And I was frustrated. So I actually stopped dancing like Michael for a whole year. The years 2017, 2016, 2017, I stopped for pretty much almost a whole year. I, I said, I need to rest. I need to clear up my mind. I really need to know what I want to do with my life, how I want to approach everything. If, if it's really worth grinding I, for Michael Jackson dancing, if it's worth doing this, you know, I would do this last video explaining that I would just quit and stop dancing like Michael Jackson. I'm done with Michael Jackson impersonating. Yeah, I'm done. It's, it's, it's been a long journey. For these last two years, it was starting to become boring, dull, just repetitive, all the time the same music in a freaking room, you know? Now, if someone gives me a show and and I, gives me a stage with dancers and stuff, and they tell me, "Hey, you must dance to Michael Jackson," I will do it. Like no, no way. I wouldn't even think about it. I would like go straight onto it. I would like say, "Okay, let's do this," because I always wanted to have my own Michael Jackson show, my own tribute show, my own tour. It doesn't matter if it's not international or if it's national, I don't care. My own tour, my own show, my own uh, presentation, my own stage. I was, you know, reminding to myself these conversations that my parents would have with me, like back in the day, back in 2010, 2009, when I was starting, my parents would say, try not to get obsessed with this. This maybe doesn't lead you anywhere, doesn't lead you to anywhere, you, you will probably you will probably going to waste your time. You're probably going to be disappointed that this thing that you're pursuing is not going to take you anywhere. And I would never listen to that. I was like, I have to grind. I have to grind. I have to keep hustling. I have to keep going on. But then when I saw it was 2016, you know, six years after, seven years after, seven years after starting dancing, like seven years. I still was not doing a living and I was really frustrated and I was really starting to questioning myself like is this really worth it? Is, this, is it really worth to keep grinding? To keep going on? It's just I felt like I was losing my time and that I could maybe just study my normal thing at university and get my normal job and just keep just doing my normal life. So I tried that for a year and I couldn't. Because a year later,
So I got some friends and I said, okay, let's try to do this. And I got serious and I started rehearsing and rehearsing. I got more and more serious. I started doing the makeup again because yes, actually in 2012, 2013, I did the Michael Jackson makeup thing, but then I stopped. I was like excited, I was like, I have good vibes. It's 2017 and I have good vibes. And I had another audition. So I went to this audition also, August, September 2017, this audition of I Want You Back and it was this show that was touring in Spain and it was pretty, it was known, it was popular and I was going to be auditioning to be the cover of the Michael Jackson impersonator there. I mean, it was something, it was at least something. It was not to be the, the impersonator there, but it was to at least be the cover, which is not bad. Um, so I was being, I was called to do that audition and um, they liked me a lot. They really enjoyed what I've done, but unfortunately they never called me. So, ah, okay, another failure more. I was again very frustrated. I was again very sad. I was uh, like, uh, nothing works for me. Like I never get the chance to really do this. And then one month later, it happened. So many things happened though. I quit university. I said, I want to quit university. I don't want to study English anymore because it's not my future. I honestly don't see myself as an English teacher for the rest of my life. I just don't see it. I can see it as a side job. I can see it as a something else that I can do every now and then because, you know, it's fun. It's, it can be fun to teach English, but I don't see it as my main thing for the rest of my life. And so I said, I want to quit university Three years in, I was three years in. I was like one year away to actually finish the degree, but I, I just decided to quit. And so I quit university and then I went to study audiovisuals. I went to study pretty much filmmaking, filmmaking, because I loved filmmaking. So I said, this is the great thing. I can, I can mix filmmaking with dancing and maybe I can make a true living out of this. And the same month I started the studies, the same month I started studying filmmaking, and the same, same month I started the classes, there was this audition for Forever King of Pop. Bueno, llevo un atuendo aquí militar. Esto es lo que usaba Michael para iniciar los conciertos en la gira del 92. So I said, whoa, wait a moment. I went to see the show originally back in 2010 with a friend of mine. Uh, her name was Gemma, and I know nothing about her today. I tried to search for her on social media and I, I never found her, so it's weird. I went with her in 2010 and I watched this show for Every King of Pop and I loved it. I was like, wow, I was this kid. I was excited. I was, wow, this Michael Jackson show is pretty cool. I, I wanna, oh my God, I would love to be there on stage. And now like eight, yeah, eight, seven years later, more or less, there's an audition for it. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna go there participate, audition. <laughs> so I went to the auditions and it was tough. It was very intimidating. A lot of people, dancers, impersonators, singers. There was a lot of people in, that, in those auditions. There were so many people. I felt incredibly intimidated. Well, bueno, yeah. has pasado el casting? Sí, ya me he presentado y a ver, a ver si hay suerte. Sí, mm. cuéntame para ti, si consigues en enero, el 18 de enero, estar en este escenario, ¿qué es? Uf, un sueño cumplido. Oh, sueño cumplido. Un sueño cumplido, desde luego. But I did my thing. I did my thing. I performed. And, ladies and gentlemen, it took them three months to call me, but they called me. I was called to be Michael Jackson in Forever King of Pop. So, we did our first performance on TV right before our premiere in Madrid. We did our promo in television. That's how it all started. We started doing our promos. That was my debut. That was my first time performing finally in a show that is finally gonna happen, that is real, that is finally going to be happening. That's a real show. And I was called to be the impersonator of that show. 
and we premiered and we did our premiere in front of Jermaine Jackson. The show is supported by the Michael Jackson's Family Foundation. It's supported by Jermaine Jackson. It's for, supported by Latoya Jackson. It was supported by also Joe Jackson, which is obviously Michael Jackson's father. It was supported by all these family members of Michael Jackson, supported by so many fans, was supported by so many people. And we finally were there. I was finally there performing on stage, doing my thing, and finally making a living of what I love. And finally, I achieved what I was looking for for 10 years, to do Michael Jackson, performing Michael Jackson, to impersonate Michael Jackson professionally, not only through YouTube videos, but to actually do it live, to actually do it on stage and to be there in front of thousands of people. And here I am today. I've been through a lot of crazy things. I got heartbroken. I was this socially awkward kid who, would, who wouldn't know how to speak in front of camera, who wouldn't know how to speak in front of people. I was incredibly shy back then. Such a shy and such a very awkward, socially weird kid. And now I became and evolved thanks to all this journey of dancing, thanks to all this journey of Michael Jackson, thanks to all this journey of meeting all these fans of Michael Jackson and performing in different places and learning from different people and different experiences, different projects and different shows. I evolved and after also meeting different girls who changed my life, different girlfriends and they changed the way, they shaped like the way I really saw life. Right now I'm with someone who is absolutely beautiful and amazing and supportive and I thank her so much for being there. And like since 2009, you know, I changed, I transformed so much and I learned so much. I became this guy who now is doing what he loves for a living. I met a lot of people and not only that, you know, I, I also learned to change from being socially awkward to be socially decent, you know, to actually speak with people, to not be that shy. The stage changed me. Impersonating Michael Jackson to learn Michael Jackson changed me also. The way I approached people, the way I talked to people, the way I, I, lo I lost that shyness, that shame I had on myself. I had so many insecurities on myself and I then became with really high self-esteem. I became this guy who loved himself. And here I am today, touring worldwide. I come from France, Mexico, Portugal, touring also in Spain. Now we're gonna be touring in Germany. And maybe, maybe we're going to Greece, maybe we're going to Holland, maybe we're going to China. Maybe we're going to the United Kingdom. And so it's such a crazy adventure that I'm right now in that my message is don't stop the grind. Don't stop grinding. If there is something that made me accomplish what I wanted to accomplish in life was not to stop grinding. And here I am today, 10 years later, I am Alex Blanco and I'm finally here doing what I love. I come from all these years of hard work, all of these years full of frustration and even some depression. I lost a lot of friends. I became so obsessed with dancing Michael Jackson. I became this crazy kid who just wanted to learn Michael Jackson, who wanted to just study Michael Jackson, to dance like Michael Jackson. I was just literally there at home dancing and dancing and dancing but I finally got it. And now I am such a happy person. I consider myself in such a happy state. I'm in a, such a happy state, it's incredible. I'm really happy and proud of myself. All this grind, all this hustle, all this constant work paid off and it gave its results. And now here I am, I am here working and I met Latoya, I met Jermaine, I met Dieter, I met Yuko Sumida, I met so many people and here I am. And if something I can say, man, it's just, just don't stop. Don't stop doing what you love. 
no matter what are the obstacles, no matter how lonely you can be, no matter if what your parents or your friends say, like, oh, don't do this, you don't have a future, or you're not talented enough, or whatever. A lot of people will say that to you, especially when you're beginning, when you're new to something. People will say that. They don't believe in hard work, they believe in talents, but the problem is that talent, talent happens, talent exists, but you need to work hard for that talent to develop. And hard work makes talent fly and grow and it just, it's part of it. You gotta work hard to make things happen. And so here I am, here I am. And I'm not gonna stop. The fact that I'm doing this show, Forever King of Pop, that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop. I have so many goals left in my life. I have so many objectives to do, to accomplish. I have so many, so many things to do. This is just one more step in my life. I have success in this area, but I wanna have success in way more other areas in life. And I'm never gonna stop the grind. I'm never gonna stop the hustle. My philosophy of life is don't stop the grind. Don't stop the grind. And if the future Alex 10 years later watches this video, I really hope that you're happy, Alex. I really hope that you are there. Keep on grinding and that you're there accomplishing your dreams. I hope you're an amazing father. Maybe you're already a father. Maybe you already have a kid. And I hope you're educating that kid the same way I'm educating myself to keep grinding and to do what you love. No matter what people say, just do what you love. Do it because you never know what the future can give. So that's my story. And I hope you guys got some value out of it. And I hope you guys at least learned one thing. Don't stop dreaming because dreams can be eh, real. Obviously use your head, don't stop doing stuff don't don't stop studying if you're studying don't stop doing certain things that you want to do uh, or that you should do in order to just do your dreams i mean because you never know when things can go wrong but don't stop hustling even if it's on a side even though if it's a, a part-time thing even if it's your like small little free time that you got every day use it to hustle use it to work on that use it to get better on that it took me 10 years to be where I am today. So don't expect quick results. You see in Hollywood, all these movies that, you know, success usually happens from night to day. Like, it's like a quick thing. You know, I don't know if you guys watched the movie called The Wolf of Wall Street. You know, uh, you have Leonardo DiCaprio, which was the main character. I don't know if you guys watched that movie, but I'm not gonna spoil anything, I'm just gonna say that, you know, the character from one moment to the other, like super quick, he's like super successful, has a lot of money, and, uh, and he's like successful. And we all have this mindset, because in Hollywood they give us this idea that, oh, you have success super quick, and that's not how it happens. You know, success is such a slow thing that you digest, and such a slow thing that you have to work hard every day. And, and that's it, like that's really it. And honestly, once you succeed in one thing, that's not just enough, that's not just it. You don't just succeed, but you keep on succeeding for other things. You have other objectives, you have other things. You always hustle, you always grind. That's what I've been doing since I started dancing like Michael Jackson. I accomplished certain goals, but I never stopped wanting to accomplish other goals and I always started I always worked and worked and worked and met people and got contacts and just slowly building a portfolio and slowly making videos slowly getting myself letting myself be known by the people by the community by people to know me to know who I am and to go to auditions and just show up in different places and show send emails and let myself be known it's just such a long time of work so much work, so much hard work, so little social life in my part, but that's what I've done. And I hope you learned something from me. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. And I hope this was not too long, but I hope this was a, at least some, at least I hope this added some value to your life. I hope this was productive for you to watch and I hope you got something out of it. And I hope it inspired you to just keep on going. Whether it is Michael Jackson dancing, whether it is dancing, singing, 
uh, even mountain doing your own business uh, maybe just whatever like any dream any objective in your life I hope this inspired you to do it and I'll see you again in this YouTube channel click that like button subscribe and I'll see you later bye bye esto es para Michael Jackson porque no tiene no tiene micrófono qué tal eh, muy bien aquí estamos muy bien aquí estamos <laughs>